In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Reflection. God is the creator of all things. God made the world and everything in it, the air and the water, the plants and the fish, the animals and the people. When God finished creating the world, it was perfect. When God first created people, even they were perfect. They did not sin or do anything to make God unhappy. Even though there is now sin and sadness in the world, God still cares for us. We have been given a beautiful world in which to live, and God has asked us to take care of it. We can care for the world by showing kindness to all living things. The world is God's gift to us. God wants us to enjoy this gift. But God also wants us to treat it with care. Thank you, Creator God, for making our wonderful world. Amen. morning sisters and brothers our opening hymn for this morning O come divine messiah number 55 in your hymn books O come divine messiah number 55 Good morning, my sisters and brothers. Happy New Year. <laughs> we indeed come here in a special way on this the first Sunday of Advent Year B, where we will be celebrating the opening Sunday of our new liturgical year. We would have 
for instance, yesterday blessed our Advent wreath. And as is typical of us, every single time we gather as church to celebrate, we come and we light one of the candles. We'll also be asking our family to light the candles for us. A good and pious way to help us in our Advent preparation has been to use the Advent wreath. The circle of the wreath reminds us of God himself, his eternity and endless mercy. The green of the wreath speaks of the hope that we have in God, the hope of newness, of renewal, and of eternal life. The candles symbolize the light of God coming into the world through the birth of His Son. The four outer candles represent the period of waiting during the four Sundays of Advent. The light of the candles reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world that comes into the darkness of our own lives to bring newness, life, and hope. So today is the first Sunday of Advent in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. Your response is, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come Lord Jesus, come quickly. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Advent calls us to wait in hope for the God who comes in the midst of our troubles and offers us liberation and salvation. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Heavenly Father, on this first Sunday of Advent, we begin to mark the days until the birthday of your Son. As we light this purple candle, we think of Jesus, our hope for the world. May we, as followers of Jesus, bring hope to a waiting world. You know, everybody get catch with that so far. <laughs> Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Help us in preparing to celebrate the birth of your Son, to make our hearts ready and to place our hope in you. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your hope with others. We ask this in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, my sisters and brothers. Good morning. And once again, welcome to our celebration on the first Sunday of Advent, Year B. In our Gospel today, 
taken from Mark, Jesus asks everyone to stay a week. To stay a week. And as we come then to celebrate today, let us recall those times in which we have fallen asleep. This, those times in which we have dragged the flag. Those times in which we've dropped the ball. And as we recall those times now, let us ask our Heavenly Father to have mercy on us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant your favor, faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, yourself are our Father. Our Redeemer is your ancient name. Why, Lord, leave us to stray from you and harden our hearts against fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down at your presence, the mountains would melt. No air has heard no eye has seen any God, but you act like this for those who trust him. You guide those who act with integrity and keep your ways in mind. You were angry when we were sinners. We had long been rebels against you. We were all like men, unclean, all that integrity of ours like filthy clothing. We have all withered like leaves, and our sins blew us away like the wind. No one invoked your name or roused himself to catch hold of you, for you hid your face from us 
and gave us up to the power of our sins. And yet, Lord, you are our Father. We, the clay, you, the potter, we are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ send you grace and peace. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received through Jesus Christ. I thank him that you have been enriched in so many ways especially in your teachers and preachers. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong among you so that you will not be without any of the gifts of the Spirit while you are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And he will keep you steady and without blame until the last day the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, because God, by calling you, has joined you to his Son, Jesus Christ. And God is faithful. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task. And he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Evening, midnight, cockcrow, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. So welcome again, my sisters and brothers, to this our celebration of the first Sunday of Advent, Year B. Once again, just to put things into some liturgical context. So we find ourselves essentially at the start of our liturgical celebration. As I would have said a few weeks ago, we celebrate 34 weeks of ordinary time. And we find ourselves then celebrating this particular season because of the importance of Christmas. Advent in itself, of course, is a lot like a mini Lent. And we do wear similar colors during this point of our celebration or liturgical calendar. Just like Lent prepares us for Easter, Advent, of course, prepares us for Christmas. The two, of, the two celebrations are actually quite close because, for instance, we do not sing the Gloria during Advent. And in fact, we save the singing of the Gloria for Christmas because when you think about it, the Gloria was first sung by the angels at the birth of Jesus. And as such, we wait until that time and sing it with a special verve, a special enthusiasm. The bells toll and people sing lustily because Jesus is with us. What is Advent? 
Why is it this important? And what then do we do during these four weeks exactly? Perhaps Advent I would like to describe is perhaps one of the most abused of the seasons of the church. Simply because we find ourselves invariably at this point in time studying Christmas. We find ourselves most likely putting up decorations. In fact, where we live, the majority of the houses don't have up the Christmas lights already. Nobody really is studying Advent. And the progression of the preparations that we should have for Christmas. It's also peculiar, of course, that if all else was the same, if this year wasn't any different from the others, we would have been already eating with black cake, pastel, whatever else is after Christmas. <laughs> we would already have been going to a whole bunch of Christmas parties so that we don't sing in Parang and we don't study in Christmas already. This year different. You know, the Prime Minister say no Christmas party. And I don't think that there are many companies about who will be even having a big or any Christmas celebration. This year is different simply because, or perhaps not simply because, we are in the midst of a pandemic. Perhaps it is that God has really put this particular time for us at this particular time in our history so as to force us to stop. So as to force us to really reconsider what Advent really is. Advent is not really something of a stepping stone to Christmas. The little time that you spend really looking at Christmas and not preparing for Christmas. Anybody here ever spend time in quarantine? Nobody never get catch with the in contact with people and hadn't spent time in quarantine. No? Or they're real safe. Well I have. In March of this year, I found myself outside the country. And I found myself come trying to get back home within days of the borders actually closing. While I was there, other countries, day by day, were closing off flights for different, to different parts of the world. My flight actually was canceled the day before I was supposed to leave. The morning of the flight, I got a call from the airline stating, well, you have a choice. Either you can come back tomorrow or today. But if you want to come back today, you have to find your way to our next city at your expense to come home. When I came home, of course, I had to take transport to get to my house. And my, I call up my wife and then she says, well, you know, you have to quarantine. So I had to quarantine in my house. What was interesting, I said to her, but you know, I thought we make vows for richer, poorer, and in sickness and in health. I said, she said, well, boy, you're on your own at that one. <laughs> so I had to spend 14 days quarantine inside my own house. My only existence was my bedroom, my bathroom, and a balcony. And what was interesting, of course, both myself and Father Tang Chun also had to quarantine. So we were going a little bit back and forth as to how your quarantine going. So the first week of quarantine, well, you know, you find your way around. You have a little computer and you're watching mass from the Vatican, you're watching mass from living waters, you're watching mass every day, you're praying like you didn't pray before, you're saying all kind of rosary on a 
really on top of everything. Doing a lot of research, reading, even finding time to do some push-ups and sit-ups. The second week, however, the energy start to wane. It start to get a little dreary. You start to get a little lonely. You start to wonder when this thing go really done. You start to realize, boy, one day melting into two. You ain't sure whether it's a Monday falling on a Sunday. And you start to really feel it. That's why we have Advent. That's why we have Advent. We find ourselves in our salvation history in between. You know like when you're 12 years old, you're in between? Yeah, no small fry, because you're in double figures now. But at the same time, you're not a teenager. You're in between. And add, we find ourselves in our salvation history in between. Why is that? Well, as Pope Benedict says, we find ourselves between the already and the not yet. What has already happened is Jesus has already walked the earth. Jesus has been incarnate. He has preached the gospel. He has begun his church, formed uh, 12 people and disciples. He has then gone through his passion, death, and resurrection, and he's ascended into heaven. That's the already. The not yet, however, is that he has not come back as he promised. And we wait. And wait. And wait. And we find ourselves then waiting between that nebulous zone of the already and the not yet. You find yourself a lot like being in the second week of quarantine, wondering when this thing go done. Starting to then lose your energy and wondering, boy, this thing have to have an end. As the old people say, the longest rope have an end well, how long is the rope? We find ourselves then in a almost perpetual advent. That is why then this gospel is so important for us. This gospel that spoken through Mark, Jesus says, stay awake. You ever count how many times the stay awake is in that gospel? Happens about four or five times in must be seven lines. Do you think it important? Stay awake. Stay awake. But what are we staying awake for? This particular Sunday of, of Advent is important because in this Sunday, like with the other three, there is a specific tea theme that we look at. And that theme on the first Sunday of Advent is consistent. We always remember to focus on hope. Hope. Because when we talk about this longest rope having an end, the hope that we have is what's at the end of the rope. What's at the end of the rope? There was a woman born in about the 1860s. She was born in Sudan in Africa. When she was nine years old or so, she was captured by slavers. Between the ages of nine and 12, she had been bought and sold six times. 
Finally, at the age of 12, when she was bought by the final time by an Italian general, because that part of the Africa was an Italian colony. And here was she with her seventh owner. And that particular person was worse than the other six. She would be beaten until she bled every day. A flogging for her was a lot like her lullaby. To the extent that on her back, there were about 144 welts that grew all over her back from the whippings that she would have every day. In the end, this particular general left back to Italy and he carried his property with him. And when she was in Italy, she started to understand something about our faith. And as she continued to understand the faith, when she was 21 years old, she was baptized Catholic. At 21, she was given the opportunity to go back home. To which she said no. Because she then began to understand who her real master was. She then began to understand what was the end of that long piece of rope. She then began to understand where her true hope lie. Five years after she was baptized, she became a nun. And while as a religious sister, she grew in that hope for the future. She then dedicated her life to teaching others about this real master that we all have. She died and Pope St. John Paul II canonized her a saint. And her name is St. Josephine Bakita. That's the hope that we hold. The hope that we hold uh, during this period of the already and the not yet is all about the same hope that she held as she continued her missionary journey. Despite her beginning, she, through that pain, found herself in love with the real master. That gave her hope for the future. You see, the hope that we hold, the hope that we hold comes from our encounter with God. Because if we haven't encountered Him, we won't hope in Him. How has your encounter been? How is your encounter going? Have we found ourselves in the second week of our quarantine? And how are we positioning ourselves to encounter the Lord? When St. Mark says that Jesus says to stay awake, that staying awake really is anchored in our hope, but that hope springs from our encounter with God. If we haven't continuously encountered God in a real way, we ain't going to hope for nothing. That is the challenge of this Sunday. 
The challenge for this Sunday, as we hope, is really rooted in how the quality is of our encounter. This week, as we try to stay awake, let us find ourselves in a position where we can encounter God anew. Because this encounter has to be continuous. This encounter has to be continuous. So as in closing, then I leave you with this. I used to jog. And every now and twice, we had a race. Part of the race took us up Chancellor Hill. If you know Chancellor Hill, Chancellor Hill is four kilometers continuously uphill. It does stop. And as you go, what then happens is your thighs start to hurt, your hamstrings start to hurt, your calves start to hurt, your shins start to hurt, your ankles start to hurt, your toes gain your beans. And every corner you get to, you're hoping that's the last corner. Our spiritual journey is a lot like going up Chancellor Hill. Where we find ourselves is a lot like the pain that we're going through while we're going up. Our encounter with God is the energy that we will get as we encounter Him anew. That is the energy, the fuel, the mindset the actual oomph that you want as you continue your journey uphill hoping that you will get to the end to be where Jesus is. So this week then as we hope as we come in a preparatory time for Christmas let us remember to position ourselves so that we can encounter the Lord anew in this time. Let us make the time during the course of this week to quiet ourselves to do just that. Amen? Amen. invite you now to please stand. So we find ourselves today on the last Sunday of November. Sunday and a month rather, which is dedicated to those who have died. And we've placed, of course, this basket asking all of us to place the names of our loved ones whom we remember and those who we don't so that we collectively as church can pray for the repose of their souls. This is our last week where we do so in a special way. And as we do so, I invite you just to spare a moment to recall those persons now as we pray together for them. Almighty God and Father, by the mystery of the cross, you have made us strong. By the mystery of the sacrament of the resurrection, you have sealed us as your own. 
Look kindly upon your servants, now freed from the bonds of mortality, and count them among your saints in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And as a, as a community then, working towards our hope in God, let us say together our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And as a community then drawn to the Father, praying all the while that he may give us his hope through our encounter with him, let us raise up our intentions to the Lord. For the gift of openness to God, we are the clay and you our potter in this time of advent may we be open to what god wants taking seriously the command to prepare for god's coming into our lives lord hear us lord graciously hear us for the gift of faith may we continue to grow in faith in our God who is with us. May we be alert to the signs of the times, steady and blameless in our lives as we wait for the day of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the gift of patience. Like the servants in the gospel story, may we be alert and prepared, waiting for the return of Jesus, our Master. May we be ready to greet him when he comes, worthy of his confidence in us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the gift of hope, Jesus commands us to be on our guard at every hour of the day. May we so live according to the gospel that we may be filled with hope as we wait for the Lord's coming. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We also lift up and pray those who are discerning a call to the priesthood and religious life. We pray, O oh God, as these persons continue to discern your call for them in their vocation, we ask that you open their hearts to whatever graces that you would bestow on them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In the next few weeks, we will be have enjoying the ordination of three more transitional deacons, three more men who will be moving on to the priesthood soon. We pray in a special way as they prepare for this next step in their spiritual journey that you, O oh God, may continue to enlighten them, inspire them, and fill them with your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We also pray and remember our 
infirmed, those shut-ins amongst us in our parish who cannot be with us for one reason or another. We pray, O oh God, that your spirit, the paraclete, may descend upon them to comfort them in their illness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And in the silence of our own hearts, we lift up our intentions to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, as we gather all these prayers, we ask that you may give us your graces. And as our prayers rise before you like incense, we pray, O oh God, that your graces, your blessings may descend upon us like the dew fall. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please join with us as we sing hymn number 51, Come Lord Jesus. Number 51, Come Lord Jesus. I invite you now to please kneel as we retrieve Jesus from the tabernacle.
Pakistan. My sisters and brothers, we are beginning our communion rites, and in this way we unite ourselves with our other brothers and sisters who are celebrating Mass at this time. And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <laughs> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Come to me always, number 26 in your hymn book, Come to me always. Oh. 
Jesus Christ. I am loving Lord, my friend. Just a man. Come to me always. Ease up me always. And you will never want. Rest in You also join those who cannot be with us today but are with us via the internet as we pray a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Just one or two announcements. First of all, today, as I mentioned before, is the last Sunday of the month of November. So Friday coming will be the first Friday. And as is typical, we will have on first Friday exposition and benediction of the Blessed Sacrament from 5 p.m. to 6. So this is another golden opportunity during this week in which we meditate on hope but that hope which is, which is really born out of an encounter for us to come together as church in the exposition and benediction to encounter the Lord anew. Amen? Amen. Additionally, another wonderful opportunity that we can do as family to encounter the Lord anew as family and what we've been doing as a family for many years is through this book. This book is entitled Advent. And what it is essentially is a daily, daily devotion during the course of this Advent season. It is actually written by, and it says here, Father Robert Lianos, who we all know moved on to be Monsignor Robert Lianos and then Bishop Robert Lianos. It gives you a sense of how old the book might be and how long that we've been using this as a family. I've written about it in our parish bulletin, and it's a, another challenge during this course of this time of Advent for us as family to gather around our own family Advent wreath ourselves and to go through this devotion together. It's a beautiful book, and it's a wonderful opportunity for us as family to encounter to encounter the Lord anew as we celebrate firstly his first coming amongst us at Christmas but also as we wait between the already and the not yet for his second coming. Amen? Amen. This book, might I add, is sold by the Family Life Commission and it's only $25 and of course you could use it every year hence. So it's very important, I think, that we should all try to make and avail ourselves of it. If there are persons who want it, and we can probably get some for the parish, and we can avail you of it as well. Is there anyone here who is celebrating a birthday today or in the week to come? I invite you to stand as we pray with you and for you. Nobody? Are there couples here who are celebrating a wedding anniversary so that we may also invite you to stand so that we can pray for you and with you? Nobody? Nobody born at the end of November. Nobody had a wedding anniversary at the end of November. Very well. There is a special Advent solemn blessing. So I invite you to stand. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing and answer Amen after each invocation. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of our own, His only begotten Son and yearn for His coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, 
and active in charity so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, our word and communion service is over. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. the man